Hello guys, this is Viraj and welcome to GS Core. So as we do every day, we will be looking into current affairs and then doing their analysis and also helping you to skill for what to solve your MCQ examination. So this program is targeted on getting you through in the prelims examination. Let us see important topics of the day. So first is arrow aerial missile defense system. Very important from the point of view of Israel-Iran conflict. Israel-Iran conflict we have uh, taken up in the earlier video. Please see it for comprehensively understanding what is the issue between these two countries. Then Brahmos missiles which we will be exporting soon to Philippines. Space platform of Indian Navy that has been inaugurated african swine flu uh, swine flu that was noticed in kohima and then lama 3 lama 3 is a ai platform of meta the parent company of facebook and whatsapp hello let's look into the first topic so we will be as we i said we will be dealing first with arrow aerial defense system so it is it is basically a multi-layer defense, <coughs> defense strategy against aerial threats. It is a defense system. It is a defense system that that it has that is at the center of defense <coughs> strategy of aerial threats. Mostly ballistic missiles. Alright. Now this particular missile defense system has been built jointly by Israel aerospace industry it is one of the partners of india when it it is one of the partners of india when it comes to building defense ammunitions and arms so this has been jointly developed by israel aerospace industries and us missile defense agency all right primary role of aero system aero system is basically to intercept and neutralize incoming missiles all right so intercept and neutralize incoming missiles ballistic missiles those missiles mostly which are at higher altitude now the missile system itself has evolved it has basically two versions arrow 2 and arrow 3 arrow 2 is used for engagement in the atmosphere okay missiles coming missiles coming within the zone of atmospheric altitude and those missiles which are above the atmospheric altitude that is the missiles that are in exhaust atmosphere that travel through exhaust atmosphere for that arrow 3 is basically used so arrow 2 and arrow 3 are the components of the aerial defense system arrow aerial defense system all right how this it how does it basically work how this system basically works okay so what happens is what happens is the arrow system is integrated with radar tracking and this radar tracking this radar uh, tracking what it does is it uses green pine system now it is capable of knowing and detecting incoming projectiles incoming projectiles is in missiles and drones missiles and drones Alright, upon detecting the threat, what happens is it alerts the arrow system, arrow battle management center or arrow system as such. Okay. It also calculates, it also calculates at which point of time the interception, interception has to be done. Once this calculation is done, what happens is through a solid propellate booster, the interceptor missiles are released. Alright, the interceptor missiles are released and they are released at great speed. Alright, the speed can be reached till Mark 9. The speed basically can be reached at Mark 9. So, this was all about Arrow Aerial Defense System and it is quite foolproof. Okay, we have seen in the recent conflict, the drones and missiles that were basically fired from is Iran did not get into Israel because of this system. Chalo, 
Now let us look into the question provided. Consider the following statements regarding Aero Aerial Air Defense System. It is powered by both solid and liquid proponents. The answer is propellants. The answer is wrong. No, it is not. It is capable of neutralizing threats both in indo and exo atmosphere. Yes. The first statement is wrong. Second statement is right. It utilizes green pine radar system. Absolutely right. We have just seen it. So how many statements here are right? Two. The answer is B only two. Okay. So now moving on to the next news and that is with respect to BrahMos missiles. So India will be delivering the first batch of BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles to Philippines. All right. The delivery of the delivery of BrahMos missiles to Philippines basically comes at a time when there is heightened tension between Manila and Beijing with respect to South China Sea. Now, China basically has dispute with everyone in this region. Everyone means everyone. Okay. And this is with respect to islands in South China Sea. Islands in South China Sea. One of the major disputes that it has is with the country of Philippines. Now, Philippines is extraordinarily important for us. First and foremost, Philippines overall the stand of Philippines with respect to China has not been positive. It has never basically been positive, never been positive. On top of that, Philippines is an ally of United States. All right, Philippines also houses US naval bases. And because US in a way is coming closer to India as a defense partner, therefore, therefore what we see is Philippines becoming important for us. Take it. Uh, if we look into this particular deal, now it is also a major milestone for Indian defense export. All right. And what does it do? It reflects upon India's growing stature as supplier. India has always been a buyer. Now what we see is we being a supplier. We have been a supplier also, but most of the time it has been with respect to old Soviet military apparatus. Okay. So the military apparatus that we used, after our use was complete, we sold it to African countries. But here, what we are doing is we are producing something new and selling it. All right. The deal basically is a major milestone. We have looked into it. Uh, we have looked basically into it. And it is considered important from the point of view of India being a supplier now of defense weapon system. Moving on, if you look into BrahMos itself. So what is BrahMos? It is, it is basically a cruise missile. Okay, supersonic cruise missile and it has been developed by DRDO and Russia's NPO <coughs> NPO Machinostrovinia Machinostrovinia Okay, now remember the name Brahmos itself comes from the two rivers that are Brahmaputra and Moscow. Now these two rivers are of India and Russia respectively. What are the capabilities of this missile? First and foremost, obviously it is considered to be one of the most, one of the most precise missiles. Okay. So it has high precision and shift targeting capabilities. It can be launched from all the three platforms that is land, sea and air. Okay. And it has the range of up to 290 kilometers which is considered to be good considering that it is a cruise missile now there is a difference between cruise missile and ballistic missile cruise missiles basically are operated with more precision and reason for that is reason for that is they are satellite they are focused through satellite and their and their movement can be traced and also changed with respect to ballistic missile, ballistic missile basically travel based on based on gravitational force. So once release, their movement cannot be changed. Uh, Brahmos has the capability of carrying conventional warheads. So conventional warheads uh, and the speed is mark 2.8 now remember this now remember this okay we and russia together have come together we basically have come together and you know uh, build this missile is does not have the capability of launching nuclear warheads 
because India is not signatory to many important agreements which allow collaboration on transport of nuclear weapons or nuclear warheads. Hence, India and Russia have not been able to build a missile, basically build a missile which can which can transport nuclear warheads. All right, let us look at let us basically look at the question with respect to Brahmos. We have to basically see. Uh, which of the statement is correct? Joint collaboration, building of BrahMos missile is joint collaboration between India and Russia. First statement is correct. Uh, second statement, it is a cruise missile. This statement is also correct. Hence, our answer is C, both 1 and 2. Okay. So, sorry. Okay. Now, let us see at the space platform inaugurated. So, Indian Navy inaugurated submersial platform for acoustic characterization and evaluation where in Kerala's Iduki district. Alright, now what is it? It is basically a platform. It is basically a platform for looking into. It is basically a platform that has been built by Naval Physical and Oceanographic Laboratory of DRDO. Alright, uh, if we look into it now. If we basically look into it, it serves, it will serve at, as a premium testing and evaluation hub for sonar. Alright, and through it, Indian Navy, Indian Navy will get enhanced, enhanced hearing aid with respect to incoming ships, submarines and helicopters. Alright. What are the components of space? So, there are two major components. First and foremost, a platform that floats on water surface and a submersial platform that can be lowered to depth of 100 meters using winch system. Alright. Now, this particular Submersial platform can be easily winched and docked with the floating platform after completing operation. What is so significant about the space? About, about space? So, first and foremost, first and foremost, uh, it is a milestone in naval technology and advancement of Indian Navy. Alright, through it, anti submarine warfare basically will be you know we'll develop a better understanding of anti-submarine warfare and we will move ahead basically move ahead in that way uh, it will also it will also enhance our testing and evaluating sonar systems uh, plus it will support development of modern scientific instruments and data processing techniques for underwater or acoustics research all right uh, if you if you basically go ahead now it will enable the navy to test and evaluate sonar system with precision and efficiency it will also lead to contributions to modernization of naval technology modernization of naval technology and scientific instrumentation if the question is on space so, if a basic question on what is space is asked, so what is it? Option B is the right option, platform to enhance sonar capabilities of Indian Navy. Now, with respect to swine flu, African swine flu, what we have basically seen? What we have basically seen, it has been de detected in Kohima district uh, Kohima city of Nagaland. Okay, Kohima basically is capital of Nagaland. Okay, African swine flu is highly contagious viral disease and it affects both domestic and wild pigs. Alright, uh, it can be transmitted through direct contact with the infected piece, pigs. Alright, and it can lead to it can lead to hemorrhage in the internal organs. Death in pigs can be caused in 2 to 10 days. Mortality rate, mortality rate with respect to 
African swine flu among pigs is almost 100% and currently there is no vaccine. Currently there is no vaccine or treatment available. Alright, with respect to African swine flu. So, African swine flu, many a times a simple question is asked if what the disease is caused by what type of microorganism. Alright, so African swine flu is caused by virus. Alright friends, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of this particular session. It was lovely speaking to you. Please like and subscribe to our channel and please write down a comment if you have any doubt with respect to the, uh, the content that we have just discussed. Thank you. Bye.